inside in the Delta Lutheran Church. He's here for the week's glory. And when you remain seated, if you're here in person and if you're on worship online with us, join us in our call to worship. The song Shut the Door. No responsibility for you to refrain. Zion Lutheran Church, where following Jesus, we invite, equip, and serve our neighbor and one another. It's good to have you with us on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Whether you're joining us in person or online, we're glad to have you with us. Let us stand as we're able and begin with the Thanksgiving for Baptism. Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in our, your image and placed us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, 
and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you washed us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy all who thirst, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. chapter 38, verses 1 through 11. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid down the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were, were its bases sunk? And who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? 
For who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out of the womb? When I made the clouds its garments and thick darkness its swaddling band and scribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading the uh, psalm responsibly as found in the evening service uh, or online in the worship bulletin. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the Lord. Gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, flying their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. Then God spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which caused high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths. Their souls melted away in their peril. They staggered and reeled like drunk drunkards, and all their skill was of no avail. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper, and silenced the waves of the sea. Then were they glad when it grew calm, and when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love, and for your wonderful works for all people. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people. In the council of the elders, let them sing hallelujah. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, as at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand as we're able for the gospel acclamation. Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. 
But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. May your word be my word, and may the thoughts and meditation of our minds and hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. For you are our strength, the calmer of our storms, and our redeemer. Amen. As often as I've heard this gospel story, and as often through the, now I can say decades, of having read it and even preached it, something was brought to my attention that I hadn't known before. This storm in today's reading is no ordinary storm. I was reminded that in this boat were seasoned fishermen. They were used to storms. It was just part of the trade. It was just part of their day. The sons of Zebedee, James and John, as well as Andrew and Peter, made their living fishing on the Sea of Galilee. And most likely, those storms had been just part of the routine on that lake before. And most likely, they probably had a healthy respect for strong winds and high waves. It was a deep lake, and so those waves could get pretty high. So, why then, in this case, beyond that healthy respect and knowing what to do, why in this case was there urgency and terror in their voices? There must be something more to this storm than the average storm. And it's not just one person trying to wake Jesus. Mark doesn't say who woke him, it says they. So you can almost imagine them all rushing to the back of the boat trying to rouse Jesus. And, and they talk about their concern that they're perishing. Actually, the Greek word that Mark uses means destroyed. Jesus, don't you care that we are being destroyed? And the other part of the meaning of that word is that there's a sense of absolute terror in it. Jesus, we're going to die. Do something. That in itself says something also that they've already come to expect and know that Jesus can do something about this. As intense, as unusual as this is, Jesus can do something about it. They believe that. He is not merely another person in the boat, although with the odd ability or deep exhaustion to be sleeping through the storm of their lives. And yet at the same time, even, they know, even though they know he can do this, they're surprised when he does. Actually, they're more than surprised. They're terrified. They're terrified now, not by the storm, but by the one who has calmed the storm. The storm they are in is more than meteorological. The fear that the seasoned fishermen experience along with the rest is because beyond it being not an ordinary storm, it has something of the demonic about it. The words that Jesus uses to rebuke the storm are the words that he uses to exorcise the evil spirits of people possessed. It's the same language. And it is as if the weather has been possessed and Jesus has cast it out. With a word, Jesus casts it out and subdues it. It calls to mind the beginning of another gospel, John's telling, where right in the beginning, he says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. This Word is identified as Jesus. 
This word is now in their boat. God speaks of that creating work, that power of creation to Job. The power to create and the power to contain it belong to God. We even hear it in the psalm. This storm, it's hard to know what it is. And you can, there is many guesses and ideas out there as there are people who comment on this. What is going on here? All we know is that it's being rebuked or exorcised like something possessed. The question is, is it a threat? Is this kind of storm a threat to the disciples? And is it putting Jesus on notice that they will have opposition? That there is a force that is seeking to stand in the way of the coming of the kingdom of God. There will be a force standing in the way. There will be people of power standing in the way. And this mission's already been attempted to be derailed as Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Again and again. There are going to be obstacles that are thrown in the way. And again and again, Jesus will not be stopped. Even the ultimate last attempt, crucifixion, I know we'll kill him, will not be enough. It's not to say there will be no opposition, but just that it can't stop the kingdom of God from coming. As Martin Luther proclaimed, it cannot win the day. As terrified as the disciples were in the midst of the storm, they have a new fear, as I've already said, once the waves were being still. With our translation, it's not quite accurate when it says the disciples were in awe. The actual meaning of the Greek was that they feared a great fear. Not quite the same as awe, wouldn't you say? Oh my gosh, this, imagine, imagine if you were somewhere, maybe even, even in danger, and someone who had been your teacher, who had maybe done some miracles, all of a sudden you realize, this is the Son of God standing a couple feet away from me. It, it, it almost brings to mind it, it, it a major difference. I was in... I had auditioned and got into the Palm Beach Opera Chorus at one point, singing with the tenors, singing Italian of all things. And I'd show up for rehearsals. Well, one day I didn't have time to change out of my clericals. So for the first time I walked in with my collar on and I saw the whole tenor section pale. <laughs> they were all going, and you could see they were thinking, what have I said? What have I done? As if I were God's microphone. Uh, that's just a, that kind of experience, that kind of response is just a minor glimpse of what would have been happening with the disciples, recognizing who was in their boat. Who is this? Who is this? The reality begins to sink in. Who is this person we've been calling teacher? He can tame the wind and waves, but who can tame him? This is someone you don't want to oppose, who you want to have on your side, and who wants you to be on his side, working for the kingdom of God and not standing in the way. This is good news. And it can inform such observances as Juneteenth and pride in each seeking the will of God and not just assuming we know what that will is. To inform on this Father's Day what we who are fathers and father figures are meant to do in order to do God's will. Good news that for all of us, there is a path that we can follow. And as Martin Luther has said, we can pray that we are part of God's kingdom coming and not that it's coming in spite of us. Those who continue to be willing to do anything to hang on to power 
will continue to seek to throw up barriers while we who are called to follow Jesus will follow him as he overturns those barriers or goes around those barriers and we go with him. The fight is not over. And yet we know the fight has already been won. And we do not go it alone. And to that may all God's people say,
We pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be known to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. You laid the foundations of the earth, and the waters are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name, and all creation shouts for joy. We pray for your blessed creation, that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You keep watch over all nations. We pray for countries experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest. And at times that seems to include our own country. Guide worldwide and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are close to the brokenhearted and near to those in distress. We pray for those who are experiencing oppression. Liberate us from the systems and chains that bind us. Remove the barriers that separate us from one another. Lord, in your mercy, you dwell with us in this faith community. We pray for our leaders and elders, especially Robin, Gail, Jeffrey, Matthew, Scott, and all those who are part of leadership of this congregation. Grant them knowledge, patience, and kindness that through their leadership you may be exalted in this assembly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You promise to walk with us even through the valley of the shadow of death. Walk with Debbie, Todd, Katie, Pete, Chloe, Carol, Billy, Maggie, Adriana, Lisa, Laura, Alyssa, Jennifer, Chris, Lorraine, Kadisha, Brittany, Jackie, Steve, Allison, all those who are seeking spiritual truth and looking for God in their lives, those who are hospitalized, recovering from surgery or illness, or dealing with ongoing health issues, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, especially this day recognizing the family and friends of Bill Hart. And those we name now out loud, including those whose prayers were offered yesterday at the prayer wall of Zion's tent. We play for, pray for Kat Corelli. Pray for BSO and his team. Play, pray for Mariella Carado. We pray for the African American Heritage Board. We pray for Kyla going to school. For Annette Battle. For the son, David Brooke, for protection and healing for Rosa Dixon and Catherine Holt. We pray for all. We also now name aloud or silently in our hearts others that we lift up to you in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. You call us to work together, and so we pray for our sister congregations of Joy Lutheran of Ocala and our Savior of Ocala, that they may be beacons of hope, healing, and deeper connections with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your love endures in all situations. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers who act as fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers, and for fathers who have lost children. Bless and strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace with those around us.
You may be seated as we continue with meditation on the offering, what God offers to us, and provides for us, even without our asking, and what we give back to God. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. A few announcements before we go. Again, thank you for joining us for our worship today. A reminder that uh, the Monday morning 9.59 and prayer at the end of the day are on a break. We'll be letting you know soon when they will be returning. At that time, you'll be able to join us again on Facebook Live or join us later. Confirmation students uh, are not meeting today because of Father's Day and, and uh, next, next week they're going to be uh, hopefully at the annual congregational meeting or at least they won't be in confirmation during that time. So please remember for you to be here for the congregation meeting this coming, this coming uh, Sunday. Also, we want to thank those who helped out at the Juneteenth celebration. We had a booth. We had a number of people come by. We had, as you may have seen, we had our prayer wall again, and we had all of these people stop by and add their prayers to that prayer wall, and we told them that we would pray for them. So we thank everybody who was a part of that, who helped with setting up the, the Zion tent, taking it down, staffing that time it, and engaging with the community. It was a, a wonderful thing. And four of us were at the, the banquet the evening before. And in both the, the presentation at the celebration on Saturday, as well as the banquet, we were the only church that was engaged. And it didn't go unnoticed. They, they noticed who joined in on this inaugural time. So uh, you can feel good about us being a presence there and uh, and reaching out with the good news of Jesus Christ. The summer song, Summer Madness, uh, is still going on with the voting, with the brackets, and anyone on Facebook can vote. So whether you're here in person or online, you can join us. And it's a great way to welcome your friends into something of faith. Uh, this last week, it was How Great Is Our God versus How Great Thou Art. Who came out on top, Kurt? Tie. It was a tie. Whoa. So we have to vote again on that? So How's that work? I'll probably drop my hat. But we sang on Greater Than God this morning with a little snippet of How Great Thou Art. So we got the best of both worlds. Yeah. All right. All right. So it's so it's a tie, and Kurt evidently is the one that breaks the ties. So. Or, or the, the random, whatever. Random. random. God breaks the ties. Right. All right. That's good. Altar flowers. If you'd like to see altar flowers up here, sign up for uh, giving them to the glory of God in honor of and memory of, and contact Kurt Schmidt on that. Our um, our life verse is Mark four verses forty one b. Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So that's that's the verse we're asking you to ponder this week to consider what that is. Uh, this past week also. We were tented for termites, so we are now termite free. Thank you, Gail Schmidt, for organizing that. So if you see any termites, tell Gail, and she'll be after them. So uh, not the termites, but the termite people. So, all right. Thank you also for your generosity, whether it's generosity in your time, in your financial resources, whatever, whatever you provide. This is God's church. And we all are responsible for, for the ministry that happens here. God empowers it, God guides and directs it, but we are the ones who do that. And it's not one or two people, it needs to be all of us. So thank you for those of you who are doing that. We ask you to engage in whatever ways are possible for you. Some, some it's prayer, some it's hoisting and doing heavy lifting. So whatever it is, and if you're not sure what you can do, there's a really, really effective way to deal with that. You could just come up to somebody and say, how can I help? Works, works beautifully. So, and thank you for those of you who have. And now we invite you to stand as you're able as we receive our Lord's blessing. <coughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. 
The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.